Welcome to Money Talks. I'm Genevieve Westcott with your latest financial news from across New Zealand and around the world. In this edition, New Zealand increases its share of the international whole milk powder market. Our horticulture producers seek strategies to add value to their produce amid rising input costs and downstream buyer power. And just how much money will all those Rugby World Cup visitors spend? Ching, ching for the New Zealand economy. All this and much, much more coming up, starting with the most up-to-date market and commodity information. We're joined by ASB Rural Economist James Shortle. James, how are the markets doing this week? Well, the last couple of days we've actually been uh, looking looking a little bit better, to be honest. So, um, you know, markets, uh, equity markets out of the U.S. were up quite strongly on Monday. Overnight, they've also been uh, been pretty strong. And, you know, most of the focus has been on, you know, the central bankers out of Jackson Hole uh, in Wyoming. So uh, that's, that's been... right. The big weekend summit. And we didn't get a lot of information out of Mr. Ben Bernanke, did we? No, that's right. He was uh, he kept he kept his cards pretty close to his chest, to be honest. But, um, you know, markets were, I guess, at least boy by the fact that um, you know there might be a few things in the mix that they are seriously considering you know some different aspects and uh, you know that's why we have started to see them see them lift a little bit and US consumer data really really looking dire these days yeah consumer confidence was actually out overnight and that's back to levels uh, you know back to uh, the worst it's been in sort of 2009 so that's pretty dismal to be honest um, consumers you know not really feeling that upbeat um, they've got every reason to be uh, you know less than upbeat considering uh, the Debt, the, debt, uh, the debt crisis um, and the, the ceiling um, issues that they've had just over the past six weeks. Do you think there is going to be more printing of money? Well, there's every chance that there will be. I think there's, uh, you know, that that could be coming over the next couple of months. That was, I mean, that was really the focus of this, um, you know, the Jackson's whole meeting. Everyone was really focusing on, are they going to print more money? Are they going to do quantitative easing, the number three version? Um, and uh, they probably, uh, there's little choices out there. They probably will have to do that at some point. With the U.S. dollar so weak, of course, we've seen our dollar creeping up again. Uh, uh, what are you picking going forward over the next month? Yeah, well, we've already seen, you know, we have probably been saying that the Kiwi is going to strengthen again. You know, the fact that we we dropped down into the low 80s against the U.S. Uh, was probably only going to be over a short time. So um, it has started rising and it's been rising strongly over the past couple of days. You know, we've gone through 83, 84, now over, over 85. Um, and over the past uh, 24 hours, it's been mainly because of two things. Building consent data back here at home has been quite strong better for the economy and the second one being um, you know all these issues around the, the EQC and the fact that the you know that's put a blown out for the government they're going to have to go and sell off some of their assets in international markets and that's going to move, mean the dollar's going to be higher. Thanks James. Coming up after the break the IMF's new chief warns that the global financial system is on very thin ice and in a dangerous new phase. A euro bailout is in doubt as hysteria sweeps Germany. Is a constitutional crisis looming for Germany's Chancellor, Angela Merkel? And kiwi fruit growers prepare for the worst. Is next year's crop in peril because of the deadly virus PSA, as the $1.5 billion export industry now says? A poll of 1,300 people for the Business Council for Sustainable Development underlines the importance of the pure brand to exporters. 86% of people say sustainability and the 100% pure tourism campaign are important for giving New Zealand a real competitive edge. So ponder this in our Farmers Facts and Figures quiz. What percentage of Kiwis think New Zealand completely lives up to its 100% pure branding? The answer when we return. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Money Talks. Just before the break, we asked you, what percentage of Kiwis think New Zealand completely lives up to its 100% pure branding? Only 2%, although 52% think New Zealand mostly did. As discussed earlier in the show, U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke did not announce a third round of money printing, as some had expected at the weekend summit at Jackson Hole in the U.S. of A. Joining us now is former BNZ chief economist turned director of financial focus, Murray Weatherston. Murray, what's the latest you're hearing from the Jackson Hole Summit? Well, I think that it's been a bit overtaken by the release of the Federal Open Market Committee meeting 
minutes of the meeting that they held in August. And I think that that actually explains why Bernanke didn't really say very much at all at Jackson Hole. Um, basically, for the first time in 20 years, there are actually three of the governors of the Federal Reserve have actually voted against or dissented to the majority view. And they're going to have a they're scheduled to have a meeting in September. They're extending it to a two-day meeting, and they're going to hammer it all out there. I, th I think there was the, th the three who dissented basically thought that the the decision went too far because um, Bernanke, or, the, or after the meeting, they came out and said that they were going to hold uh, the Fed funds rate at an extraordinary low level right through to the middle of 2013. And I think the three dissenters thought that was just too you know too much. Yeah, and what does this mean for the rest of the world, James? Well, I mean, uh, as Mary's, Mary's pointed out, then, um, you know, the US Fed have committed to keeping interest rates low for a long period of time. So, you know, that has had an effect on probably some interest rates, particularly ours, government bills, um, you know, staying staying fairly low. Uh, but uh, the, you know, the real question is whether that's going to be the case. We've already, uh, you know, there's, there's three that don't agree with that stance. So is there going to be a change around that? Who knows? Um, uh, but that's probably some of the some of the big effects, and whether they're actually able to pump some more money into into the market and stimulate uh, the U.S. economy, um, that does have a big effect on equity markets. It was interesting because at uh, Jackson Hole, of course, uh, the new IMF chief Christine Lagarde was very tough and said that basically the world is entering a very dangerous phase and things ain't being solved. Uh, Murray. Yeah, well, I think she probably got herself pretty unpopular uh, with the Euro Europeans by saying that the European banks needed. To to put a whole pile more equity into their businesses. Um, and of course, you know she took over the position um, in sort of extraordinary circumstances a little while ago. Maybe this is you know her attempt to um, make a name for herself, so to speak. Yeah, and and there's an issue too now in Germany with uh, with Angela Merkel, the Chancellor. She doesn't have the support among her own party, uh, among the Parliament there, to actually uh, bail out uh, Europe the way it wants to be. What's going to happen there, Murray? Well, there's a big vote coming up uh, later on in September. Um, there's one thing I've seen on the wires that actually suggests that she might fall as Chancellor. Yeah, she, she doesn't she, have if, the numbers. If she can't carry the vote, it seems like in her own, you know, her allies or her coalition, there are several who, or many actually, who will vote against it. And she's actually going to have to go to the other side to get enough votes to pass it. Um, if she doesn't pass it, but, and she w actually will be under some big pressure. Basically, she's getting the message from a, a, a lot of people that uh, uh, it's time to just, uh, uh, you know, kick the rest of Europe to touch, if you like, and uh, get on with her own business. Uh, uh, not good for the global financial crisis, is it? Oh, and not good for, for Europe too. You know, they've obviously committed to, <laughs> to the European region, the Euro currency, you know, and like they're really facing the, a tough a tough time right now because they've committed to it and it's having some pretty significant effects on on their own economies and, and on Germany, the France. You know, the, the, the really stable uh, the really stable economies are being affected by you know the, the, the Greeks and the Spanish and that sort of thing. So um, you know, there's, there there are some big issues and it has it has not only on a biggest effect on Europe but also on the world. Okay, let's look here at home now. A PGG writes in a, had a crummy uh, report, a thirty million dollar loss. Murray. Yes, well, you know, PG Wrightson seems to have been a bit of a cock case for quite some period of time. I actually think, as far as the stock market's concerned, they'll just frankly fall off the radar now, because with Agria owning you know 50% of the business, um, I think uh, you know investors aren't quite sure anymore what. PG Wrightson as a company actually is. I mean, the suggestion when Agria took over, they were interested in the seeds business, and that's clearly a very important business for them. Yeah, and that, that's where uh, PGG Wrightson says that they're still heading. They're going to grow that. Uh, do you think it's likely? Oh, I'm sure they. I'm sure they will. I mean, they, they've got some pretty good technology there, and with the Agria. Um, component coming in as well. They should be able to grow it, but it's a question of what happens to the rest of the business. You know, I suspect you know people that use may have historically used Elders or PG Wrightson um, for their um, stock and station sort of business um, will actually start thinking perhaps we should go and use somebody else because we can't be certain whether they're going to survive. The company's actually had problems, you know, for a long, long period of time. And uh, you know, who, who, I just think that as a stock market vehicle, they'll become pretty much irrelevant.
Okay, and James, uh, Goodman Fielder as well, having a hard time. Uh, 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 big losses there over its, its baking division. Yeah, well, I mean, they make the uh, iconic, you know, Vogels and, you know, some good Kiwi brands there. But, um, you know, they've suffered uh, probably more out of the Australian market than the New Zealand market. But, but to be honest, both both those areas, consumers, you know, when they're looking down the supermarket shelf, they've been, you know, facing some more difficult times decided to trade down to slightly lower price products and unfortunately not good fielder products and that's really impacted on their profits but also they've had to go and write down the value of their bakery business because you know it's probably just not uh, not worth as much anymore and same old story with these giant companies uh, uh, we can do as well as we want but if they struggle over in australia we're never going to win here are we uh, that's right i mean the australian market's more than five times bigger than our market here and so you know a lot of people say, you know, we should join up with Australia. I, I personally think that would be the w worst thing that we could do because they would treat us worse than they treat Tasmania, and that's pretty bad. Gee, and they're already <laughs> rejecting our apples. Did you see that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what Any a surprise. surprises there? What a surprise. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just you know, non-tariff barriers are you know, alive and well. And if, if they couldn't stop them coming in um, legally, they'll stop them in on the regulations. There'll, there'll always be checks, and I suspect we'll get quite a few consignments rejected. Yeah. Allied Farms as well, uh, another big loss there, $43 million. Uh, what's your take on the company today, James? Well, I mean, th these companies, when you talk about uh, PGGs, they've, they've been through some massive changes over the past 12 months, um, and Allied Farmers have also been through some massive changes. They've been beaten, beaten around. So, you know, their, uh, their finance, uh, finance divisions uh, in different ways, nationwide finance, um, had some big, big issues. So, um, you know, they're, they're, they're looking pretty ind uh, indifferent. They've been trying to sell some of their, um, you know, their retail or well, their, their farmer outlets. Um, so they're going through massive changes, and that's going to impact on their profits and um, you know probably their profitability over the next while too. Yeah. I think I think history might show that they were close to bust before they did the deal to buy the Hanover assets, and the Hanover assets haven't turned out to be anything like they turned to be. So that that you know if you were almost bust then, you're probably almost bust now. And the, the share price of what is it 0.8 of a cent suggests to me that there ain't much value there at all. Yeah, and how much value is there now going to be in the rebuild of Christchurch? I see that, uh, uh, what, $7.1 billion now it's going to cost. Uh, even more money being poured into it. What's it going to do to the government economy, Murray? Well, the $7.1 billion is the amount that the earthquake commission is going to have to put in. The, the, you know, the cost of the rebuild is probably something over $20 billion. Um, the earthquake disaster fund looks like it's been exhausted with the announcement yesterday that the, the, the loss that they're going to have to carry is, is much higher. Um, you know, let's hope that we don't have another earthquake you know, somewhere else in New Zealand because that would be you know, disastrous for the government funding because yeah. effectively the, the government is actually now the full backer of the earthquake commission. Absolutely. And, and can, can they afford to do it? Can we afford it? Isn't it time maybe to think about a, a one-off uh, levy, if you like, that we all reach into our pockets and pull out some money now? What do you think of that, James? Well, I mean, I, I'm not sure that the government can afford it. We're sort of uh, walking a bit of a tightrope now. Um, yesterday, they did still say that they are going to get back to budget surplus by 2014-15. So they say, but it's now up to, what, $18 billion? I mean, is this doable, guys? Uh, it's it's, it's is this, is this, pretty tough. Yeah, is this like a total fantasy? Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, the thing about politics is if you can put a, a date you know, far enough into the future, you've got plenty <laughs> yeah. of chances to change the goalposts yeah, along the way. And there's, there, there will, you know let's you know be pretty clear about it there'll be some announcement that says change circumstances mean that it's no longer possible but but the the, the myth at the moment is that they're going to do it um, if the rest of the world isn't growing strongly and that's you know one of the things that's come out of America they're very disappointed in their in the, you know the growth that they've had nine quarters after they turned the corner so the the official sources are saying the bottom of the recession was reached nine quarters ago after nine quarters, they're still not higher than the peak before they started to fall, which shows the recession there has been very deep and very long and hard to get out of. Europe's in trouble. It's pretty hard to see how New Zealand can grow very strongly in, in, you know, against that world backdrop. All right, let's talk about some good news now. Uh, New Zealand has increased the amount of milk powder we sell globally. Hooray! James, tell me more. Well, I mean, uh, we probably had a had a, a bit of a better season last year in terms of production. 
uh, than the year before. But, um, you know, we th uh, there's, there's a whole lot of things that go on in that uh, dairy commodity space. And, um, you know, the, the countries like New Zealand and Fonterra probably changing the mix around a little bit, uh, concentrating a bit more on, on whole milk powder than perhaps the other products. So, um, you know, while we have, uh, you know, grown our share in, in, in whole milk powder, it's probably come at the expense of some other products. But we uh, certainly have benefited out of that. Yeah, and exports uh, for the first uh, half of this year were up 24 uh, percent. I'd like to be involved with a company with that uh, kind of growth, wouldn't you, Murray? Um, only so long as the growth was profitable. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, th th there'll be plenty of industries that might get growth uh, without making any money on it. The only thing to, 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 to remember is that, you know, if, you, if you're growing, we only, have, we only can only produce X amount of milk with a little bit of growth overall. So if we're growing whole milk powder at, at such strong rates, then another product's got to take... Um, has got to take, uh, you know, it's got to take a decrease. So, um, you know, that's that's something to keep in mind. While while we're seeing some really strong growth and exports out of that particular area, there's got to be other areas that uh, that haven't done quite so well. And speaking of not doing quite so well, the kiwi fruit industry mm. looks like it's in real trouble. Just coming out of winter now, wasn't cold enough apparently to kill that killer virus. Uh, now we're going into the um, into the flowering, if you like. Uh, right. uh, could be very bad news for a very big industry. It could. That's right. The figures I saw this morning suggest one. One in seven orchards is affected by the um, PSA virus. Um, about 30 or 40 percent of that is the more virulent form of the virus. Um, it seems to be spreading a bit from where it originally was. Um, and you know, when growers are starting to say, uh, "Will we actually grow the crop this year?" Um, things have to be very, very serious. And, you know, it's a one and a half billion dollar export industry. If you know, if it lost a a third of that, you know, that's five hundred million dollars worth of exports that, that, that we won't have. That's five hundred million dollars worth of income that growers don't have. Yeah, latest available data shows that. Uh, let me read this to get it right. Nearly nine percent of all of the country's orchards are infected with the airborne PSA. The real killer one, though, has uh, affected five point four percent of the country's orchards. That's pretty big and pretty scary. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty serious, and um, you know the problem's growing, growing, uh, and uh, you know still, you know, struggling to contain that. So I guess where's the end point? That's the, that's the question, and uh, we really don't have have an idea of where that end point is at the moment. Maybe we need to take some of that rugby world cup money that starts flowing in today. Uh, uh, the English got a huge um, uh, welcome, if you like, out at the Auckland airport, which was nice to see. Uh, rugby World Cup's going to make us a lot of dough, isn't it, Murray? I no, don't think so. You don't think so. I, Tell I, me why. Well, I, I never believe the figures that are promoted prior to an event occurring because that's the you know that's the sell um, in order to get the event to come to New Zealand. Sure, there'll be money spent on accommodation, alcohol, restaurants, and things like that. I don't think the average New Zealander will actually see much impact from the World Cup other than. It, it, you know, transport might be a bit difficult around the games, etc. But you know, I don't believe the flow-on effect of the World Cup is anywhere near the numbers that have been promoted. What do you think, James? I mean, I uh, sort of uh, tend to agree that it's going to be uh, uh, that. We, we may not, overall, we may not come out of this, um, you know, in a win-win in a situation because we've spent so much money on stadiums and all sorts of things and they're not going to be paid back out of this injection out of, uh, out of what's been spent. But, um, you know, that money has been spent and, you know, right now we are going to see a lot more people coming on board, eating our food, drinking our wine, drinking our beer, um, staying in hotels and that is going to give a, you know, there is going to be a groundswell of activity um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's going to have a, it's going to have a positive effect. When you, when you look at it over, overall, are we going to recoup the costs that we've incurred? Probably not, but, um, you know, it is going to have some stimulation effect for, for the general economy. Gentlemen, thanks so much. Coming up after the break, future proof on the highways and byways of the economic world as our experts take us along for the ride and point out what's coming up. But first, a question for you in our Farmers Facts and Figures quiz. The combined exports from New Zealand, the EU, Argentina and Australia made up what percentage of the global whole milk powder trade last year? Find out after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Money Talks. Just before the break, we asked you, the combined exports from New Zealand, the EU, Argentina and Australia made up what percentage of the global whole milk powder trade last year? 80%. And now it's time for Future Proof, what's coming up for our experts. And I'll tell you what's coming up 
for fruit and veg growers in this country. If the Greens become the government, they're going to have to pay a lot more for their irrigation water. What do you make of that, James? Well, it seems like a pretty uh, interesting start, to be honest. I mean, uh, New Zealand got plenty of water we've uh, you know perhaps we may be able to u utilize it um, you know in different ways and more effectively and things like that but we've got plenty of water looking at some of the stats with us relative to Australia you know we've our water usage is you know much much lower um, than than out of Australia so uh, seems like an interesting and um, challenging uh, argument to, to win on that one I would well, say. let's face it it's a 5.5 billion dollar industry most of the stuff is exported to the rest of the world why shouldn't they have to pay for it if they're making money off it? Murray. Well, I guess if it's a scarce resource, they should actually have to pay for it. And, and the, there's probably, I don't know the exact detail of the Greens policy. I, th I think the chances of it you know, coming to pass, i.e. the Greens getting into government, are, are pretty low this time. Um, but if, if water actually is scarce, then maybe people who use it should actually have to pay for it. Maybe something we're going to have to start thinking about. I guess the issue is that it's uh, not, you know, yeah, water is a scarce resource globally. Um, we are pretty lucky here that we have vast resources in terms of that. So, um, yes, we maybe have to use it a, a little bit more effectively and, you know, control and things like that. But um, is a tax the best way of doing that? I um, would, would potentially question that. They say they want farmers to pay something like 10 cents for every thousand litres of water. That could add up. That would add up. And sounds relatively cheap to what I have to pay for water through my taps at home. Okay, well there you go. What are you watching this week, James? What's coming up that's hot and happening? Well, so we've got to be uh, watch, keeping a pretty close eye on the markets. Uh, I guess there's, there's plenty going on, um, and uh, you know there's plenty going on for the for the Kiwi dollar and and where that's going to be going. We've already seen it uh, lift through, you know, 83, 84, 85 cents. Potentially going to go higher. So um, you know, there's so much there's, there is so much going on volatility around the world that it is having an impact on on the dollar and on interest rates. So got to keep it keep a pretty close eye on that and a close eye over in Europe and especially what's happening in Germany because uh, if that goes down and falls apart uh, we are in really big yeah. trouble yeah. Murray yeah I mean that's I think that's more a couple two or three weeks away I think the big um, global uh, policy statement that's coming out is Obama I think is talking on government spending and taxation in America next week and so I think you know people will be st starting to see how he's trying to frame the debate that the congressional committee will actually have to have. Yeah, and two big problems that they haven't come to grips with, any of them, high unemployment, people have given up looking for work, mm. and no housing starts at all. And those are two things that really drive the American economy. That's right, but but in, where do jobs come from? Jobs come from economic growth, and economic growth has been you know extremely slow. I said before that they're still not above the peak that they had before the the, the recession, uh, and that's two and a quarter years into it. And the thing with housing is there are so many foreclosures and so much stock already there that until all that clears out of the market, um, nothing's going to happen on housing starts. Interesting. I just had a couple of buddies come back from Palm Springs where they go every year, and I said, what did you notice about the recession? Because there's a lot of wealth in Palm Springs. And they said, you know, it's, it, it's terrible. There are no more free breakfasts at the casino. And I laughed, but then I thought, that's a real sign. Uh, that's, that's a big loss leader for the casinos. If they're not giving the free breakfast out, times have got to be tough, no, even in no, Palm no, Springs. No one's spending, no one's prepared to gamble. You got awesome. it, baby. Okay, thanks, gentlemen. Thanks to my guests, ASB Rural Economist James Shortle and Director of Financial Focus, Murray Weatherston. Be sure to check out the website. Meantime, 66 years ago this week, the Japanese surrendered to the Allied powers, ending World War II. This is an actual film made of the surrender ceremony of the Japanese to General Douglas MacArthur in Tokyo Bay on September the 2nd, 1945. And for the first time, you will hear the actual voice of General MacArthur himself. Oh, and watch for the New Zealand representative too. The battleship Missouri, 53,000 ton flagship of Admiral Halsey's third fleet, becomes the scene of an unforgettable ceremony, marking the complete and formal surrender of Japan. In the Bay of Tokyo itself, the United States destroyer Buchanan comes alongside, bringing representatives of the Allied powers to witness the final capitulation. General of the Army Douglas MacArthur, Supreme Allied Commander for the Occupation of Japan, boards the Missouri. And now, in a Navy launch, the Japanese surrender party arrives. They are headed by Agent Mamoru Shigemitsu, Foreign Minister of the Japanese Surrender Cabinet, 
who was wounded by a Korean patriot in Shanghai years ago and walks on an artificial lake. We are gathered here, representatives of the major warring powers, to conclude a solemn agreement whereby peace may be restored. Mr. Shigemitsu comes to the surrender table. These dramatic first pictures were made by newsreel war correspondents and army and navy cameramen and were specially flown back from Tokyo. The time is 9.05 a.m. The Japanese have been on board exactly 10 minutes. General MacArthur signs as Supreme Allied Commander. Air Vice Marshal L. M. Isset for New Zealand. Concluding the brief history-making ceremony, General MacArthur expresses a wish. Let us pray that peace be now restored to the world and that God will preserve it always. These proceedings are closed. Keep the faith. See you next time.